Good morning, it's Toby. It's breakfast in BBC Radio Sheffield. Uh, now, let's talk about this, shall we? There was another twist in the felling, uh, tre- Sheffield tree felling saga yesterday. We now know that around a third of the 305 remaining trees which were set to be cut down will be saved, including the Vernon Oak. This comes after further talks between Sheffield Council and campaigners. The council say that a combination of engineering solutions, regular monitoring and ongoing maintenance means that fewer trees will need to be replaced. And, crucially, the contractor, Amy, will foot the bill. Let's get a bit more detail from Lewis Dagnall, who's the council's cabinet member for the environment. Good morning, Lewis. Good morning. Put some flesh on the bones for us, then, what's been agreed? OK, so about six months ago, when I, when I came into post, I, I came into the studio and spoke to you, and I said we need to f- try and find a way forward as a city, to draw a line be- under this dispute and move on and start talking about some of the other challenges we face as a city. So I've spent the past six months reaching out to people interested in this issue, stakeholders from across the city, and in the last three months, we've been in a process of mediated talks run by the Centre for Effective Disputes Resolution and chaired by the Bishop of Sheffield, directly with Sheffield Tree Action Groups, to talk through our different positions and try and reach a better understanding. As a result of that, we yesterday outlined what we think are the next steps towards resolving this. Now, the first point, as you say, is that a third of these trees will be saved outright. The remaining trees will be phased over the next decade, and we'll be doing ongoing monitoring to check the condition of those. There's a, hand, there's a few trees that will, we think will have to be replaced next year, but we're going to be going out and engaging with residents on a street-by-street basis to discuss the options and the choices and the reasoning behind that. Does that mean that there are only these 300 left to be felled, or is this just the healthy ones? We're still going to have to take out the stuff that's disease, dying, dead. Well, these are, these are the 305 trees left over from the what, what what's called the core investment period. To get the to get the original investment done, these were meant to be done by by the end of 2017 in the first five years. But obviously, we reached an impasse, and it was the right time to take a step back, to take the time we have to think about how we can reach a compromise. Is there some view abroad at the council that says actually we could have done this a lot earlier? Well, I think it's it was a good time to take the time from the pause in March to to reach out again, to engage with different groups around the city, and and to rethink our position going forward. We've got another twenty years of this investment program, and we want to reset relations um, to be on a more constructive basis. I don't think anyone who's going to argue a compromise is, is welcome. I think Stag must well, must be saying that. I think I've not heard this. I wasn't I wasn't around yesterday. We, Paul Brook apparently spoke to Howie yesterday. One of the things that has to be considered is that the trees that have been announced as being saved today are saved because a group of people stood up to their local authority. There are people in Sheffield with suspended prison sentences at the moment uh, because they protected those trees. We were told that they must be felled, no choice, and now we're told actually we can save them. Um, So whilst it's welcome news, we think there's a history of um, uh, misleading the public that needs to be dealt with, and sadly the council's refused to work with us on an independent inquiry, which is, you know, work that we'll... We need to try and convince them that an inquiry is what's needed. Uh, They're also saying on their Facebook page that they haven't agreed to the phased felling. They they don't like that idea. They don't think they should be felling any any healthy trees. So, first things first, obviously the compromise isn't perfect because that's the nature of compromise. But they're not actually agreeing to to the phased felling, so it's not even there, is it? Well, it's outlined, we've published yesterday um, quite a long joint position statement that details where we got up to, the points of agreement um, that we reached, and the points where they, there's further work to do to to develop our understanding of each other's positions. Um, but I think I think that they have welcomed this. They joined me at the press conference yesterday. It's it's difficult after a, a dispute like this to find a way forward. But I I think we've put in the work to put this on a much more positive footing. Surely their call for an inquiry though is reasonable because. If you're looking to find a way forward, you've got to understand where you've come from. And there is a feeling that lies have been told and that, and that untruths have been used to justify things like knocking people up at five o'clock in the morning and arresting and, and attempting to have people put in prison. 
can there be an inquiry as to how the decisions were made, who made the decisions, and, and see whether, whether or not the, the three protesters were vindicated? Because they were told there were no other solutions, and now we know there are other solutions. So somebody either got it wrong, which is charitable, or lied. Well, I think there's two points here. The, the first is that this, this, this dispute has had, and this programme has had an unprecedented level of scrutiny, including judicial scrutiny. You know, there was a judicial review into the Streets Ahead programme in which the judge found this is a legal programme. It's within the democratic competence, and although people are, are welcome to disagree with it, it's ultimately it's, it's within the council's competence to do it. Um, so we have had a lot of scrutiny of already ongoing. The council has acknowledged its mistakes, like... Rustling's Road that you mentioned. And the actions of the police, which are separate to those of the council, have also been reviewed by their independent processes. The other point, though, is I've listened very carefully to, to my constituents and to people around Sheffield, and I think there's a wide range of views about what you should do with the trees. But I think there's absolute consensus that we need to find a way forward that lets us move on as a city. And what I've heard from people is that they want me and my colleagues at the council to put our energy into finding constructive ways forward and not simply raking over the past. So I listened to Stag's view through the talks, and it's detailed in our joint position statement. I listened to their view that they felt that an inquiry was necessary, but politely we disagreed, and they're welcome to have that view as a civil society association, but as democratic politicians, we have to decide what's in the best interest of the city. And that may be an inquiry, if only to get your point across, because if you don't do, if you don't give them the inquiry, you know what they're like, you know who they are, you know the abilities they've got. There'll be a book, there'll be a film, Lewis. I mean, they, will, they will investigate this with or without you. Now, if they, if they are then seem to be having to, to, turn up, to turn stuff up, you're going to look even worse than if, you, than if you tell them actually who made the decisions and what the process was. Well, I'm quite happy to that we found a constructive way forward. I'm happy to, quite happy to go into the next local elections. We, you know, we have regular scrutiny from the electors of Sheffield judging our performance, and we've been re-elected to deliver this highways investment. But I think what the people of Sheffield also said is they want us to find a way forward on this issue of trees. A costly, burdensome inquiry, I don't think is the best use of scarce resources. I think we should be putting our efforts in to developing a new highway tree strategy in the new year, chaired by an independent chair, involving stakeholders such as STAG. But people have been criminalised. People have been put in court. The people have, have, have lost thousands of pounds. They want to know why. Well, that's part of the... Those are the issues that we want to want to put behind us. Those are the difficulties we've experienced in this dispute. You. You've not been in court. You can put that behind you. But, you know, these are, these are, these are, these are middle-aged, you know, professional people who found themselves in court, found themselves on protest, found themselves getting hit. Punched. Well, nobody ended up in court because they were taking part in protests. We welcome democratic, peaceful protests. You know, we have all taken part in many, as Labour politicians, we have taken part in many peaceful, democratic protests. What happened, though, is that on occasion, it became a risk to people themselves and to the workers when they intervene in health and safety barriers. And in the interest of a rule of law and in protecting the, the safety of those workers, the council had to take action. But, you know, we're now in a position where, where STAG, um, including people you know, like Mr Brook who, who have been in court, have been working with us to find a way forward and focusing on the future. Louis Dagnall, thank you very much indeed.